Google it, you'll uh -huh. find it. The zip code. Oh, okay. Yeah. It must be there on the book lot. But we'll be nowhere near it. Yeah. Uh, today's sermon is going to be coming out of Psalms 46. Psalms 46. We're going to be looking at two verses today, verses 10 and 11. Psalm 46. Thank God we got a young man visiting us this morning. God bless you, young man. Glad to see you. God bless you. We've got a real interesting, rich text today. We're going to be able to explore because of times like these. We need some things that will help us out there. Oh, yeah. Let me know when you get there. We're going to read Psalm 46. Verses 10 and 11. Can we read together, please? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Well, here's Say, our subject this morning. God is our refuge. God is our refuge. One more time, let's say it all together. God is, God is our, our refuge. refuge. And refuge is basically a fortress. That's right. A place of protection. Now, the psalmist wrote this, and I'm going to give you a little background before we look at uh, verse 1. Uh, because it says something here in verse 1. Uh, it puts us in perspective. Go ahead and read verse 1, chapter uh, 46. And let's see what verse 1 has to say. So first of all, we need to find out the psalmist wrote this because evidently there was some trouble a long time ago. And when you go back to 2 Kings, you find the trouble with his King Hezekiah. He was the last righteous judge of Ju King of Judah that nobody else had a relationship as close as he did. And we find right here that it was a situation where the king of Assyria had made up in his mind he was going to take. Good morning, Sister Paul. It's good to have you with us. We look at Psalm 46, verses 10 and 11. We find that the king of Assyria, Brother Wilbur, had decided now that he was going to come conquer everything in that area. And because of sin and disobedience, God used a certain king back in biblical days, Sister Barbara Ann, to be able to chastise his children because they wanted to reject God and decided they wanted to have somebody else as a God. They wanted idolatry. They wanted a king. They wanted all the other different things that was associated with that other than God. So God allowed the Assyrians to come. And here's the thing. The Syrians just got to capturing Samaria. The ten tribes of Israel. And we find that because of that we find now the king, now he's bolstering, Brother Lee. In his mind's eyes, he said, now I'm right, ready now to take Jerusalem. I'm ready to take God's footstool. Yeah. Hezekiah said that. He heard that. Brother Cease, we're looking at Psalm 46 and 10 through 11. Gotcha. And we find right now that when he did that, we find that he got the bad message because he had a great army with him. Yeah. He had Many people, as far as you can see, that then came up around Jerusalem. Jerusalem surrounded by all this massive amounts of men. Mm -hmm. And all that, the rap seeker came up and chastised and was threatened to say, you give us a, a, a ransom and what we're going to do is, we're going to think about letting you come out as captive. We're going to save your lives. Right. But if you don't, we're going to destroy Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Picture this, I want you to understand. We're talking about now in a time of trouble. And we find now that when, 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 when Hezekiah got the word, what the rep shaking is saying, first thing he did, he put himself in ashes and sackcloth. All right. Hmm. Bottom line, everybody else's knees was knocking. When you look outside and you surround surrounded by your enemies, as far as you can see, because the room was up high, and when you get out and look, as far as you can see on the hill, what number did oh, All surrounded. Hmm. And the word that got out, how they then took Samaria and the ten tribes of Israel and took them into captivity. Now, Judah, you're next on the radar scope. Oh, but when Hezekiah got the word, the first thing he did was he sent word to the man of God. Yes. He 
You say, I need to get in touch with Isaiah. I need to talk to Isaiah about what's going on. And we find now that when Hezekiah sent word to Isaiah about what the rap shaking had said and what he was going to do, Sister Lee, Isaiah said, well, I'll tell you what, let me talk to the Lord. And by that time, he sent a letter. And the, chef, the rap shaker sent a letter and he had his hands. And Isaiah told him, say, I'm talking to the Lord and God told me to tell you, everything's going to be all right. All right. All right. I need you to understand God is a refuge. Now all of a sudden, now, that, not only did he get a verbal, now the rap shaker with the king of uh, Syria was so bold to say, now, you have rejected my invitation, so now I'm coming with additional men to take care of you. And he looked at further and further to the hill, covered with the enemy all around, sister man. Looking at the bad spot for whole Jerusalem. And we find now when he got this letter, Hezekiah did, he took it to the temple of God and he spread it out and said, Lord, look what this man is saying about you. Come on, come on. Look at all the things that he put me down. He said, he then took all the other different mighty kings around, but they, they, they couldn't save him. And he's saying that, but you trust in a God you can't see. Oh, you believe in a God that can't do nothing. I can't see the God. I didn't beat everybody else. He went down, he spread out, and he talked to the Lord and said, Lord, did you see what he said? Mm. And the word of God came to Isaiah and said, Isaiah, go tell Hezekiah. I done heard your prayer. I done heard your prayer. And don't worry and don't be afraid because I am your refuge. All right. Now we find right now the children of Israel, now they're getting excited because they got a word from God. Yeah. And not only that, but now they're singing this song on their way to church. Oh, all right. the, sometimes you gotta go to church and get people the same song to get you motivated. Yeah. But can you imagine you get motivated on your way to church? Right. Can you imagine on your way getting excited about I'm going to the house of prayer because God has done something for me? Because I've got evidence that God can do what he said he can do. Amen. Find right here in verse 1, God says, God is mm. our yeah. refuge. My dears, I know everybody here is going through some struggles in this thing called life. Yeah. And the fear that's going on with Cordova 19 and COVID-19 and everything that's going on and all the other different troubles that you already got knocking on your door. But if you believe in the Bible, Okay. If you believe in the basic instructions of folk in the earth, if you believe that there's a God somewhere that hung the sun 92 million miles yeah. in enough on nothing, yeah. if you believe that God created something way back when when there was nothing to the dog, if you ought to have some evidence that God is in, you can join in with the psalmist this morning and say, God is our refuge. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness now. And the time of it is, is important. And now that but God is our refuge. And guess what? Why are you weak? Come on. He's strength. Yeah. You can't strengthen you. Yeah. Bad news make your knees weak. Yeah. Young man, you strong, you're big and bold up, but one thing about it, bad news will make you weak. Fear yeah. will make you weak. Yeah. It'll put you in a place where you ain't got no hope. Yeah. You're desperate right now. But God wants you to understand. I am your refuge. Yeah, yeah. This is for the belief. Yeah. God is a refuge for the believer. There are yeah. people that do not believe yeah. that God is able. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, God is able. Yeah. Meet yeah. you every heart cross. Yeah. God is able yeah. to step in with nobody else for help. Yeah. That God is specializing. Yes, yes. So the time we find right here, he said, God is our refuge uh -huh. and he's our strength. Uh -huh. And guess what? A very present uh -huh. help. Don't you ever know? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Have you ever been in a place where you know trouble is present? Yes. We find out the children of Israel were sitting out looking out there and there was no not, no doubt in their mind. It was imminent danger in their mind's eyes. It was potential of destruction. Yeah. Yeah. They were closed up. They couldn't go nowhere. And one thing is kind of like this COVID-19. They don't want you moving around. Yeah. They want you to stay home. Yeah. They want to stay safe. Yeah. The children of Israel were in a place where they had no other choice but to stay inside the fortified wall. Right. They were dependent on the fortified wall. Yeah. At that point in time, some folks right now they got tired of staying at home. Brother, sister, you better do what you need to do to take care of you. 
Yeah. You better do what you need to do and use common sense. Yeah. God gave, to, gave us word to mask up, wash your hand, keep it distant. You better do that. Yeah. We find out that God is a very present what? Help. When? In, in time of trouble. So we find right now the most significant thing about anything in life is timing. Yes. If it ain't if, it's a matter of when. Yes. Trouble gonna come knocking at your door. No. Trouble no. gonna get in your ass face. No. And now that in that day of trouble, you all there know I got some help if I got way to call on the Lord. Yes. Right. If you can't call on the Lord, you ought to be at least waiting there. Hey. You ought to acknowledge who he is. You just point up. And no God is able. We find out God is able because he's our refuge most significantly and importantly in the time and in the day of trouble. Verse 2 says what? Therefore will we not be feared. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Go ahead and read me verse 3. Though the waters there roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. We're looking at the summit. They were singing this on their way to the temple of God. Because they were singing this, they had to believe the words of what the songs they had to say. There's got to be a song inside of you of victory because of who God is. God is the creator. Yeah. They acknowledge who God is because you got to first of all know, you say, therefore, we'll, we would not fear. Bottom line is, the biggest thing in our minds is when we don't trust God, we fear. Amen. We are concerned, we have things in our mind, but we have not consulted God. Amen. We have not talked to the creator of everything. He already understands, brother and yes. sister, way back before he said, in the beginning, yes. in the fortress of eternity past. Yes. Now, I don't know how long eternity past was, yes. but he was back in there thinking about you today. Amen. You think about the trouble that you're experiencing today. Because right. like Hezekiah was in a place, he said, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. He said, I've seen it coming. Yes. Brother and sister, God sees the trouble coming in your life. Yes. He knows. To the believer, there's nothing to the Bible that's going to sneak up on you that God don't already know. So to say that God is an all-seeing eye, he's an all-knowing, all there's nothing you can't teach God. There's nothing you can't tell God. There's nothing that you can't explain to God that God don't, first of all, don't know how you feel. Hebrews 4 and 12 says he's the son of the thoughts and the ends. He already knows how you think. That's a dangerous thing, ain't it? To know he didn't break a rise up do peace. He knows what you're thinking. Yes. So he knows when you ain't believing in him. Yeah. He, knows. he knows when you don't yes. trust him. Yeah. You can tell that man that you're going to yeah. to say anything. Yeah. The when the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Do you know it for yourself? Yeah. There's nothing more greater yeah. than we have than to know God personally yes. in times of trouble. Yes, you ought to be able to have some evidence cool. that God did something in your pay. Right. Well, you gotta go for it. Did he wake you up? Right. Right. Did he wake you up this morning? Yeah. 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 Are you in your right mind this morning? Yeah. Can you clap? Yeah. 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 Can you say hallelujah if you want? God has made a way. Yes. In spite of all the trouble that we have seen in our minds, eyes, right. right. and we believe how big a mountain it is, but it ain't nothing but a mold of God. Amen. It's a speckle of dust That's all. to That's God. All. But the psalmist was saying right here, therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed. I need you to understand. God wants you to understand. Don't worry about if I decide to get rid of the earth. I made it in the first place. I'm still here. You got to have a creator before you make something. So the creator is still here. And when you understand who God is, brothers and sisters, the greatest thing I can do is try to help you visualize in your mind how awesome a God we're talking about. Just like you sitting on the chair. God is sitting on his throne. And the wave of two eternities 
operates at the base of the strong. Yeah. So if the earth, he decided to get rid of the earth, guess what? If he did it before, hey, he can do it again. Yeah. He made it. He made it. Yeah. He can change it. We can fix it if that's what he want to do. It's his stuff. That's right. It's God's everything belong to God. Yeah. Right, so that here's why I want to understand. You belong to God. Yes, sir. Everything you own belong to God. Right, right. Everything that God allows you to have belongs to Him. You don't own nothing. Amen. So when God decided to take a loved one home, and He allowed us to privately join them in our lifetime, we got to be able to be in a place to say, Thank you, Lord. For what you've done over here. That's right. That's right. God is moving some people, praising their faith out of your life, and you're trying to hold on and cause them trying to bless you. Yes. But you're trying to hang on. Yes, Lord. Sometimes we need to learn to let go and let go. We find now a lot of things that we've found and holding on to, and God decided to remove it and take it away from us. We want to hold on to the pain and the anger and the hurt, but God wants to release you this moment. Yes, God wants you to let go this moment. God wants to say, let go and let I know what's best for my child. You my child. Yeah. And because you are my child, I know what's best for you. Yes, yeah. And now that the psalmist said, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the mist of the sea. Yeah. The last time the mountains found themselves in the midst of the sea, Noah had a flood. Yeah. It only rained 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. And the water stayed there 150 days. Yes, so even the tallest mountain that you know of, yeah. it's already was underwater. Uh -huh. We found out the God that we serve. Yeah. God bless your hearts, Sister Candy, my babies that showed up this morning. God bless you. Even though yeah. we find, he said, even the mountains go into the sea. I need to understand, if you read the book of Genesis, you find out that they did at one time. Yes, so God has the ability to make water do what he wanted to do. Right. Anybody who's got water on top of water is all right with me. I don't know about you, but he's all right with me. And he done got a guy water for twice, and I know he's qualified to do it again. So the son said, I know our history. I know how God stacked water at the Red Sea. I know how God stacked water at the Jordan. I know that God can do whatever he wanted to do. And he called that God is. I'm with him. Find right here, he says, not only that, he says, though the waters are a roar and be troubled. Though the water come back and forth and it's roaring back and forth and it's falling. We look at Psalms 46 and 10, verses 10 through 11. We find right here, he says, though the waters therefore roar and trouble, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, he says, Selah. So at that point, I now was standing in the sun. They were saying it is going to the house of God. They were coming down the streets of Jerusalem. They were up in the house. They had all the enemies around, but then you hear him saying, that's the thing I need you to understand, brothers and sisters. Instead of crying, instead of complaining, start singing and let your enemies know, I'm trusting in my refuge. Don't let your enemies know, I got a joy on the inside. You trying to hurt me on the outside, but that's something on the inside that don't let me keep my peace. Yeah. Oh, man, say, hallelujah, yeah. 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 I know it looks bad on the outside, you think you got me, but I got a God that lives on the inside, yeah. because God lives inside of me, yeah. I ought to have a praise coming out of me, yeah. because God going to make a way, I don't know how he's going to do it, Brother Wilford, I don't know how he's going to do it, Sister Lord, Cynthia, but I know God going to do it, God's going to make a way, out of no way. Find right here and now what you say in verse 4. What y'all got in verse 4? It's a rich text this morning. Wow, there's a what? A stream. There's a blessing right there. Amen. God bless your heart, Sister Valerie Johnson. Amen. We want to just encourage it this morning because the psalmist says. There is a what river, the stream whereof that what shall make what glad the city of God. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand. Jerusalem is in the middle of the desert, but the psalmist looked back and realized back in Genesis when.
when God opened up the windows of heaven Whoa. and he started pouring out a blessing. Yes, right? So they were looking at the blessing God was going to pour out in your life if you trust God. Yeah. I don't care how dry it seems, you might be in the desert, all your resources is gone, and look like no help is coming along. But when God opened up the windows of heaven, he said, there will not be room enough for you to receive yeah. what God got for you. I need you to understand, even though you can't see it right now, God already got his blessing made for you. Way back in eternity, before you even showed up in this world, God got your blessing with your name on it. God, not a God that's a short God. God got blessing for everybody that believes. And according to what God has for you and the favor that God got in your life, that's why it's a refuge that nobody gets what's yours. Amen. And we find out the stream, the psalmist is singing now. He said, Lord, pour out your blessing. Let it rain down on me. This morning, brothers and sisters, repeat after me. Pour out your blessing. Pour out your blessing. Let it rain down. Let it rain down on me. On me. Pour out a blessing. Pour out a blessing. On me. On me. Lord, this morning, I just needed a blessing from you. We find out this morning, Sister Mary, when you acknowledge who your source of income is, when you acknowledge where your resource is, when you realize that you tap into a supernatural resource, you open up a window from the eternity and bring it into time. And when he's decided in the fullness of time, he's going to bless you because your wife is going to we find out it's God's holy word. And the service had read it. And they're going to say that stream is going to come down. And it's be glad in the city, the holy city, and place of the tabernacle of the most high. Brothers and sisters, when you come to God's house, God's going to bless his house. God's going to make sure the house stays. God don't make preparations and preparations for his house. Right. And when you come to God's house, you all come expecting the best. You all come expecting the best. Yeah. You all come expecting that God don't do something nobody else can do. Okay. And I don't know how, I don't know when, but God, I'm looking for a blessing this moment. Right. Right. So let me wake up this moment, that's yeah. a blessing. Yeah. Let me walk this moment, that's a blessing. I mean, no life mine, that's a blessing. But let me come to the house of prayer, that's a blessing. But now that you done told me that you are a refuge, yeah. you're a fortress, yeah. you're a protect me, because I'm your child, a child of the kingdom. Hallelujah. You got to be a believer. Yeah. Everything's going to be all right. Yes, sir. Verse 5 said what? God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right her. God is where? In the midst. God is in your, you young folks say, yeah, I don't need you in my business. But you show me God in your midst. Are you in your business? Because you is God's business. And the question is, how your relationship with God? And that's the question, is how is this? So the bottom line is, according to your walk and your faith in God, determines how your business is going to change. If you want to have a positive resource, you make sure you trust God. You make sure you tell God. I know you're my refuge. Talk to God about it. Open up your heart and explain it. Lord, you know what I'm in need of. God knows what you need. But you got to talk to him. Talk to everybody else. Find out that he wants you to call on him. He wants you to tell him all about your truth. Hezekiah sat there and he went to the house of prayer and said, Lord, look what this man has said about you. Not only that, Lord, look around him. He brought a whole bunch of friends with him to take his out. Yes. God told Hezekiah, you tell him, boy, I heard the prayer. Yes, he heard I heard the prayer, Hezekiah. Come to the morning. I need to know God won't be to tell you this morning. I heard your prayer. I don't know what you think you're talking to God about. But God won't be to let you know this morning. I heard your prayer. I heard the sincerity of your prayer. I can wreck you guys in place. You can come for comfort and protection. Yes. Woo! He's a counselor. He wants you to call on him. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll direct your steps. He'll order your steps. He'll protect your family. He'll watch over the children. Everybody's worried about all these different things, but God's a keeper. And when God seals you, with the Holy Spirit of Christ. Yeah. Woo! Man, right now, 
her and said, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand. It makes no difference what's going on around you. God is in this thing. Yes. When God is in this thing, what you can mess with God? He's the creator. He got his hands in it. We want to pray for Sister uh, Simon. Brother Deacon Wilford Simon's wife had I sir, want to pray for her. Let her know God's in the heat. Amen. God's going to help heal that eye. Amen. God's going to help do what he needs to do because that's what he is. He's in the business of healing. Amen. He's a miracle worker. Amen. He specializes in the impossible. Amen. He doesn't want me to tell you about who he is because Amen. that's his qualification. That's his Amen. resume. And somebody needs to know that God will provide. Amen. Nobody else will. Yeah. Right now he said God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Look at God shall what? Help. Brother sister, God is a helper. God is a help when you need time. I don't care what struggle you're going through. I don't care how dark the clouds seem. God will help through that dark time. God will help through the sorrowful time. God will help through the brokenness. God will help when you feel all alone. When you feel like everybody else left you alone. But God is not left you. God is my help. Yes. Yes, sir. God is my yes. refuge. Yes. Because he's our help, he's also a deliverer. Yes. He shall help her. And then what? That yes. right hand. Yes. Early. God is going to help you early. Yes. It seems like forever to you because God ain't responding. Brother Susan, you got to have some patience. You gotta wait on the Lord. In the fullness of His time, not your time. God made time. He put us in time. He walked in time. He came in time. He died on time. He rose on time. He got out of time. He's looking back in time. You and I are running out of time. So God ain't got no time in God's neighborhood. So we in the fullness of God's time. Everything is His time to you. Everything is according to his master plan. Right. Brothers and sisters, yeah. what you go through ain't nothing but a test. Yeah. And because you got a test, God can get you out of your mess. Yeah. God can't do nothing until you get out of the way so he can get the glory. Yeah. It's all about him getting the glory yeah. in your situation, yeah. in your setbacks, oh. in your disappointing time. It ain't about you. Yeah. You might be crying, yeah. crying down tears, like it's not out of yeah. my mouth, but it ain't about you. It's about God showing up and showing out in your circumstances. It's about God getting crazy about getting you out of whatever it is you say you can't get out of. It's about God showing the impossible because he does the impossible. He specializes in the impossible. That's why he's our refuge. Woo! Yes, sir, that's him. That's his resume. Yes, Lord. And look what he said right now, verse 6 and 7. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I don't think y'all got that, did you? The sons were sitting there ringing and they're singing and they want the enemy to hear on the other side of the wall. Because he said, guess what? Uh, the heathen rage. You might be kicking up some dust out there. You might be ready to raise up and do some stuff out there. But one thing I have found out is that the kingdoms were moved. Even though you came and you didn't move Syria, you didn't move all these other different places. But the place where I stand is holy ground. The place where I pray is holy ground. And God is in this place. And I dare to come the way you have to come over here because the God I serve is waiting on me. Run to the you can take your trouble. The God I serve is waiting on you. I'm glad you showed up today. I can't do it, but the God that's got my back got this thing. And he's my refuge. He's my back. He's got everything I need. He's a promise, and God has given you a promise. I'm going to deliver you. God keeps his word. And that's what he said right now. He said, 
Lord of what? Of hosts. He is what? With us. Come to me. I need you to help me with that again. He said what? The Lord of hosts is what? With us. I need you to say that again. and don't care so somebody else can hear this. The Lord of hosts is what? With us. God is with us. And even that you out there in the world wide web, God is with you whether you like it or not because everything belongs to God. Amen. That's how awesome God is. That's what God is. A refuge. Now we look and says now, verse 8 says what? 8 9 says what? Come behold the works of the Lord. Yes. What desolations he had made in the earth. Uh -huh. He making wars to cease All right. to the end of the earth. He breaking the bow and cutting the spear asunder. He burned the chariot in the fire. Now what he's looking at now, the psalmist say, I want you to check out God's work. The evidence what God has already done. Brother, so that it ought to be some works in your life that God's already done that give you some evidence he's still alive. You ought to understand he's still ready. Yes. Young folks, I know right now you don't see nothing but you are. It's all about you, but I need to know God has been protecting you up to this day. Yes, God has been protecting you up to this moment. Yes, God has been taking care of you up to this hour. Yes. God is our refuge. Yes, and yes. that's why the psalmist said, come now, let's behold the works of God. Can you remember what God has done and the history that Israel had had to go back down memory lane? Yes. Remember when they got out of Egypt and all of a sudden God said, I'm going to take care of Pharaoh for you. Yes. They just tied him for 430 years. Yes. But when they got to the Red Sea, Moses, he said, Moses was in your hand. Hey. He said, God, let the brother stick. He said, stack out your hand and that stick. Hey. And the water stacked up on hey. top of water. Yeah. And the Red Sea. Right. Somebody got the Red Sea today. I need God to open the way out of no way for him. God didn't make a way out of no way. Because God is a way maker. Yeah. God is a heavy low taker. That's who God is. He specializes in the impossible. That's why God is your refuge. That's what you going through. God may take care of. Then God closed up the seats of the Bible and drowned Pharaoh right. and his army. That's right. But I right now, verse 10, if you don't mind, just the first two words. Be still. That's the problem right there, brother. Some of them moving too fast. Yeah. Some of us need to slow our road. Yeah. Some of us need to get on knee bone university. Yeah. Slow down and be still. Yeah. Let go and let go. Be still and talk to God. Yeah. God sent him with his eyes open, his ears open. He want to hear what they kind of say. Tell God all about it. Tell God all about yeah. it. Tell, me. Tell God all about the heartache yeah. and the pain. Yeah. God wants you to be still and tell me about it. Yeah. God want to have a relationship with you. The greatest thing you can have, brothers and sisters, is a right relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. question is, how is your relationship today yeah. with your creator? Yeah. He said, be still, brother Cecil. Yeah. And guess what? And what? No. That what? I am. I am. He ain't bragging about you. <laughs> God talking about his own resume. <laughs> Don't you get tired of reading about the Bible? Oh, oh, about him. Him. Don't you get tired of your feet? You and me in there somewhere. Yeah. But every time I turn the page, I keep hearing God talking about himself. Yeah. God say this is evidence of who I am. I will do 
word, brother. If you believe in me, I will deliver you. That's his promise. That he's going to do. He's going to counsel you. He said, when you call on me, I'm going to tell you how to handle your business. And the time is in the time and the day of trouble. When you reach out to me, I'm going to handle this, Sister Barbara. I've got this. That's what we got it in. That's up. Woo! Uh, I'm going to be exalted above the heathens mm -hmm. and I will be what? Exalted yeah. in the earth. In the earth. Yes, I made the earth and I made you out of the dust of the earth yes. and I put breath in your mouth so you can give me some praise. Yeah. The bottom line is God going to get exalted if you don't give him no praise. Hey. He'll make no rocks. Hey. Proud Proud your name. And I don't want no rocks. Hey. I don't want my name. <laughs> Look at verse 11 now. I'm getting ready to take it to the cross. Oh, Lord Jesus. The oh, Lord of hosts is with us. Did, wait, did you hear that again? Why does he keep telling you and reiterating this moment? Somebody's sitting here and out there in radio land need to know the Lord of hosts is with us. Let me say that again. The Lord of hosts is with us. I need you to say that because you think you just think by yourself. But the scripture said, according to the scripture, the Lord of hosts, what? Is with us. I need you to say that again. Now give me some attitude. The Lord of hosts is what? With us. Tell your problem. The God of the Lord of hosts is what? With us. Because the God of the host is with us. What shall you fear? Who shall you fear? What should you have a doubt about? What is it you did with that my God can't handle? And he's with us. He's more than the whole world against us. He made the world. Ain't nothing he made it go against his creator. That's right. That's right. Oh, yes. Y'all look at me like a calf. Yeah. 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 I'm all right with it. Oh, my God. But I'm trying to encourage you this moment. It's like pulling teeth with no novocaine. I need to encourage you this morning. Because life can beat you up before this sermon this morning. Life can kick you down, make you around. And all of a sudden, now you just need a little bit of hope to hold on. Just a little while more. And he said, the God of Jacob is our refuge. We find out the God of Jacob. Yeah. Abraham and Isaac. Right. That same God is our refuge. Yeah. That same God that also tells Isaiah, you say he's going to come in through 42 generations. Yeah. That same God is our refuge. And he's going to send his son from eternity in a time because you need it right on time. Yeah. Look at Jesus. Yeah. He wrote the Bible. Yeah. They nailed his hands. Yeah. They nailed his feet. Yeah. Jesus said, yeah. and I, yeah. if I be lifted up, from the earth, I draw all men under me. They raise him up between earth and glory. They raise him up, creation shook and trembled like a drunken man. The sun refused to shine. I heard he told me that to Julius, he must be son of God. I heard a man. He's on that cross between earth and glory.
something different this morning. I'm going to extend and open up the doors of the church that somebody would like to join. Yes. Now's a good time to come with the opportunity. Since it's said you'd like to come and join. Yeah. It's invitation to you now. Yeah. What a time. What a time. Yes. What a time. Mm -hmm. I was offered. Mm -hmm. It was to accept or reject. Thank God for you. God bless your heart. Amen. Now we get ready to do the Lord's Supper. Thank God for the first Sunday. Amen. Amen. Thank God has allowed us to see it. First Sunday in October. We're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Every chapter, First Corinthians. Yeah. I'm going to start at verse 23. Because it's significant. It's very, very important. What Jesus did. What Jesus did for you and I. Yes, sir. Some folks say Christianity is a bloody mess. Hey. I'm so glad it is. Yeah. Hey. It's the blood that saved me. Saved me. Amen. It cleansed me. Lord. I'm so glad. Oh, yeah. It was God's way of redemption story. Yes. Because of redemption story. Yes. God is able. Yes. Can we read together, please? For I have, I have received, received of the Lord that yes. which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, do to the remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So we find what Paul has to say. Many. Many. Yes, it is. say a few. How many? many. Yes, many. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You think about God's number. Thank God. Thank God for another day. Thank God for you coming out. Thank God for this moment, this hour. Yes, another day. Another day, the Lord. Yes, it is. This is today. The Lord is made. Yes. Let us what? Rejoice. Rejoice. All right. You spread. Everybody got the bread? All right. Now, this bread represents the broken body that was nailed on that old rugged cross. They said anybody was nailed to that cross was cursed. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, we'll there we go. All right, now we're good. All right, this bread, he said, take ye and eat. Now, this grape juice represents the blood. Yes, Father. It came out of Emmanuel's vein. Yes, this blood represents the remission of our sin. Yes, Father. Thank God for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you all. New commandment. A new commandment. I give unto you. I give unto you. That you love you one another. As I love you. As I love you. By this. By this. Shall all men know. Shall all men know. That you are my disciples. That you are my disciples. If you have love. If you have love. One for another. One for another. Grace and mercy and truth. May the grace of our Lord and Savior. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Then the rest of the Bible is now. Till the saints of God come together again. And they all said. Amen.
God bless your hearts and thank you for coming out today. And I hope you see it a little different.